In my last video, we took a look at Five Nights at Freddy's sister location and recreated all Five Nights of gameplay using command blocks. Every minigame section was put together to form a full playthrough of the game, including both the scooper and private room endings. Now this is going to be a follow-up episode to that video where today we will be returning to the project to fully complete sister location's gameplay by recreating the custom night all in vanilla Minecraft. Though this night includes similar animatronic mechanics to past FNAF games, there is still a lot of interesting gameplay to recreate in Minecraft form. Sister location's custom the knight takes the player back to the private room where they then have to survive against 10 different animatronics depending on what challenge mode is set. And just like the private room ending, both doors and the air vent are able to be closed to stop any attacks, however this time we are able to do so while looking at the cameras. Alongside this, the player has a power and oxygen meter to keep track of which can be tampered with by the animatronics. So to counter this, the player can use a controlled shock while looking at certain rooms in the cameras to stop the resources from depleting. Those are the new and important gameplay mechanics that I wanted to go over before we begin. Now as far as all of the animatronics are concerned, we'll be taking a look at them as we go along. But to get started, here's the location where everything is going to be taking place. It's an exact copy of the private room over from the main location, just put far away so that way we don't get confused with the mess that's going on over there. Now you might have already noticed that there's already some command blocks put in place, but this is simply just to make this desk fan here animate by having two different custom player heads constantly swapped out on top of an invisible armor stand. But with that aside, since we already have the play area already built, we can get straight into working on the gameplay, and let's start with the office mechanic. Now I've gone over this design many times throughout this series and it's the exact same build as what we have over at the main private room but just in case this is your first time watching the way that I make doors is by having an execute command block trigger when one of the buttons in the office is pressed which is then going to turn on this toggle flip flop here cycling this item around inside these droppers and hoppers which is then going to activate each one of these systems either opening or closing the doors. Now the way we have the doors actually open or close is by having these clone command blocks here which is going to clone each one of these door frames up to the main build which is going to give it the closing or opening animation. Now you'll notice that there's also a chain command block on top of each one of these clone commands, but this is simply just to have a play sound command player sound every time the door opens or closes, just to add a bit more immersion to the build. So if we go ahead and press the button next to this door, you can see that the door is then going to close with that nice smooth animation, as well as playing a play sound command as the door closes. Then if we go ahead and press the button again, the door is going to open back up. And this same thing works for each one of the other doors. So if we go ahead and click the button for the air vent, you can see that the air vent door closes and then we can go ahead and open it back up and the exact same with the door over at the right. The door closes and then the door opens back up. With the doors now finished, let's now move on to the camera system. Now, since there's a bit more features to the cameras in the custom night than past FNAF games, this is going to be a bit different than anything we've done before. So let's take this step by step and see how it's going to work. If you've watched previous episodes in this series, you may recognize this design. However, it has been changed a bit and we will get into why in a second. But like always, the way the player will be able to use the camera is by throwing an item in the inventory that corresponds to a specific action. This works by having this row of command blocks detect when the player has thrown an item, which will then activate each one of these strips of command blocks, which is going to replace the items in the player's inventory with the items inside of these chests. This lets us color code each item and lets us know which item has been selected. So when the night starts, we're going to have this inventory set up with an office item, cameras one through four, three door controls, as well as an item that lets us scroll to the next page since we don't have enough inventory slots for every single camera. So as I go ahead and throw each one of these items, you can see that the system is going off and also replacing all the gray dye in our inventory with lime green green ones, that way we know which camera is currently being selected. Then if I go ahead and throw the next page item, all of these redstone blocks are going to be removed, and a row of redstone blocks is going to be placed down here, giving us access to the rest of the cameras, where we can then check out camera 5, 6, and 7, the same three door controls, as well as the item that lets us go back to the last page, which is going to remove all the redstone blocks from down there and replace them up here, which then gives us access to the first set of cameras. So to make these cameras functional, I've now gone ahead and added in teleport commands to every camera, so that way we are able to look throughout the the entire building. I've also gone ahead and made each one of the doors work by linking the command blocks that detect when the item is thrown to the door system, which lets us then close the doors remotely. So if we go back to the office, you'll now see that each one of these doors are now closed, and if we throw the items again, it'll open each one of them back up. This is pretty similar to the way that FNAF 3 worked, as that build also had a two-page camera system, but also let us perform certain tasks while looking at the cameras. But that's all that's needed for the camera setups, now let's finish the lost office mechanic by adding in the power and oxygen meter, and for that we'll be using a command method that I have been used before, but should still help this build feel a lot more polished. For the first time in this series, we're going to be using the scoreboard command. Now, if you're not familiar with what the scoreboard does, it's the command that will let us have a more accurate power counter, as well as displaying the numbers on the side of the screen at all times. So to start it, we have this hopper clock here, which is always going to be moving an item around, and will occasionally power this command block here, which is going to decrease the power 1% at a time. This makes it so that power will always be draining, even when we're sitting in the office with no resources being used. Before we put anything into this command block though, we first need to 
to set up some other commands for the scoreboard, starting by adding in some objectives, which is what's going to be shown at the side of the screen. So what we want to do is type in the slash scoreboard command. We want an objective and we want to add an objective. And the first one we're going to add in is the power system. So we're going to name it power. And then we're going to put dummy at the end of it. So that way we're able to modify the variable however we'd like. Next, we want to add in another objective, this time being for the oxygen meter that's going to be on the side of the screen, as well as a third objective, which this time is going to be a status bar. And this is what's going to contain both of these values together so that way we're able to have everything organized on the side of the screen. Now that we have the objectives ready, we can now set up the scoreboard itself by typing in the following command. So once again, we want another scoreboard. This time we want to set the players and operation that's going to play out in consideration to the power meter. Now we want the power meter to be set underneath the status bar so that way it can all be categorized in one group. Then we want the power to be equal to the amount of power that the player has. So we want it set to at P and power. And that's all we need for this entire command. So we'll go ahead and set this command block to repeating and always active. And now the command is ready to be shown at the side of the screen underneath the scoreboard. However, before we do that, we first need to add in the oxygen meter as well. So all we need to do is copy the command block and replace power with oxygen. So that way we'll be able to show both off at the same time. So we'll go ahead and remove power as well and we'll replace it with oxygen. And now both of these are ready to be shown on the side of the screen. So the last command we need to add in is another scoreboard command. This time we want to go back to objectives and set display on the sidebar and we want the status bar to be shown that's going to show both of these operations. So if we go ahead and enter this in chat you can now see that the side of the screen we now have the scoreboard all in place where we have the status bar and both the oxygen and power meters underneath it. With the objectives in place we can now add in the values and have both the power and oxygen meter at 100% to start the night. Now we can finally go back to this command block here and have it remove a single digit of power every time it's activated. So as the following command here, this is how the power is going to slowly drain throughout the night. The system starts at 100% power and every time the command block activates, it will continue to deplete it all the way until it hits 0% power or until we beat the night. Keep in mind that this is just the power that gets depleted while we're idle in the office. Now by using the same setup, we're able to make the power deplete faster every time a resource is being used. So here we have five more hopper clocks which will activate every time a door is closed, the cameras are being used, or if a biddy bab is tampering with the power. And as we start to remove all of these redstone blocks, you're going to see that the power is going to deplete much faster. So it's going to be very important to balance out the resources throughout the night and make sure that we don't run out of power. So to make the power deplete in the way it should, I've added in some set block commands to each one of the cameras and doors that will remove each redstone block when they're being used. So that way the power depletes only when needed. Then when the player stops using any of the resources, the redstone block will be re-added, stopping the power from draining. So that's all that there is for the power drain system. The next thing we need to add in is the system that will detect if the player runs out of power, which will then cut off all the player resources. This is pretty simple as all we need are some more set block commands that will remove the redstone blocks that power the doors and cameras. Now the way the system knows that the power has run out is by using this execute command block that detects when the power objective has reached zero. When that happens, the doors and cameras will be disabled and then Ballora will soon jump scare the player. Now speaking of Ballora, now that we've finished all of the office mechanics, let's begin working on the animatronics themselves and start with Ballora. In the custom night, Ballora will occasionally appear in one of the hallways and start to play her music. Now we don't actually need to do anything the moment we start to hear it. However, once it gets loud enough, we have to close the correct office door to avoid getting jump scared. So to get this mechanic to work in Minecraft, we have four note block covers of the music box theme that will randomly start to play during the night. At first, one of the two furthest note block covers will start to repeat itself, which will trigger a randomizer after every loop. Now the randomizer has a chance to keep on looping the current track, or it can start the note blocks that are closer to the office, making the music louder, which is when we need to close the office door. Door. If we don't do that in time before the track ends, we get the jump scare. Ballora is also the one who jump scares the player after the power out, so I've added an extension to the power out sequence that will trigger her jump scare after that happens. Now, believe it or not, this is actually everything that's needed for Ballora to work, and we've completely finished her mechanic. So let's continue down the list in order and move on to the next animatronic. Up next is Funtime Freddy, who himself isn't an actual threat, but instead it's Bon Bon who attacks the player. Freddy, however, will continue to travel to the left and right closets, and it's important to pay attention to which door needs to be closed when he announces an attack. So to get started, this randomizer will give both of these Freddy armor stands a 50-50% chance to teleport in one closet or the other. As that happens, these play sound commands will activate, which are going to play footstep sounds on the same side that Freddy is at, letting the player know where he is. Next, we want the attack sequence to start. So when Freddy has reached the room, this redstone lock will be removed, unpowering this hopper, which will let all the items inside of it flow into this chest. Now, once all of the items have left the hopper, this redstone torch will turn on, activating this randomizer, which will trigger either a normal attack in which we have 
have to close the door on the side that Freddy is at, or the opposite door in case of a surprise. For normal attacks, the setup is quite simple, as there are set block commands that will cut off the jump scare from happening every time a door is closed. For surprises, however, we need these two AND gates here, which require two actions to happen for this command block to activate, which will then cut off the surprise jump scare. This first command block detects if Freddy is at a certain closet, and this command block detects if there is a redstone block on top of the spot. This is because every time we close the other door, another set block command will trigger, setting another block on top of this concrete. This makes it so that the opposite door needs to be closed in case of surprises. After Freddy calls for an attack, these repeaters will start to activate until they reach the command blocks. If the wrong door is closed, they will power them and let Bon Bon jump scare the player. If the correct door is closed, then these repeaters will start to power these command blocks, which will play a banging sound on the door before moving Freddy to the opposite closet and swapping the two armor stands. The system knows which armor stand needs to be swapped as we once again have a command block that detects when Freddy is at a certain spot and if the redstone block that powers these repeaters is still set. And in case the wrong door is closed, the jump scare commands will cut off this row of repeaters since it has a slightly longer delay than the jump scare does. This is what stops the rotation from happening if the jump scare plays out. That was a lot to go over, so I'm hoping that I'm still managing to explain this well enough so that way you can understand how this works in case you're not as experienced with command blocks. Luckily, that's all that's needed for Funtime Freddy, and it's probably the most complicated character from the Custom Night. So let's move on to the next animatronic, who should be much more simple to set up. Yendo is one of the weirder characters in Sister Location. However, it doesn't stop them from being a threat in the Custom Night. After they randomly appear in the office after putting down the camera, the oxygen meter will rapidly start to deplete, making it harder to see. To counter this, the player simply needs to lift the monitor back up again to make Yendo disappear, letting the oxygen meter refill. So like almost every character so far, we once again start with a randomizer that gives Yendo a 25% chance to spawn in the office every time the player returns to it. If Yendo does spawn, we have a set amount of time to react before the jump scare activates when the oxygen hits a certain level. When Yendo is active, this redstone clock circuit will turn on, which will activate both of these command blocks, which is going to start to deplete the oxygen level. Once it reaches 50%, this command block here will detect it and will give the player a blindness effect. If the meter reaches 30%, however, Yendo will jump scare the player. However, if the player uses the cameras, this command block here will detect that the player is no longer in the office and will power both of these command blocks, stopping the oxygen from depleting and also starting this circuit, which will add back oxygen until it reaches 99%. Once it has reached that certain level, this command block here will detect it and stop the oxygen from going up any further. Let's see if we can get Yendo to spawn in so that way we can properly show this off. So there we go, Yendo spawns in when we put down the cameras and go back to the office, and now the oxygen meter is decreasing, but when we stop off the block, Yendo is then going to disappear and the oxygen oxygen meter is going to start climbing back up again. Now obviously we're not going to be able to move around in the office, but stepping off the block is the same thing that's going to happen if we were to enter one of the cameras, which is then going to make Yendo disappear. Now that we have Yendo built in, we can now use the same setup for future animatronics, such as the Electro Babs and Mini Arenas when they start to deplete the oxygen and power. But before we move on to those two however, we next need to add in Funtime Foxy. Just like in FNAF 1, Funtime Foxy also has a cove in the corner of the building, which must be constantly watched in the cameras to stop them from moving. If Foxy does end up leaving the curtain, the right door must be quickly shut to prevent a jump scare. We'll be using the same build as the FNAF 1 Foxy for this, but since it's been a while since I released that video, I'll go over how this all works. This redstone block here is powering this redstone line, which is stopping all the items from inside these hoppers from going into these chests. Now in between each hopper is a comparator which activates the hopper in front of it, making it so that way when the redstone line is unpowered, the first hopper will start to filter all the items until it's empty, which will then turn off this comparator in front of it, letting the items in the next hopper filter into the chest. Every Every time a hopper empties, it also powers these command blocks, which will be moving the Foxy armor stands and curtain stages to the next movement phase in the build, all the way until Foxy leaves the curtain. When that happens, this middle repeater line will activate these three command blocks, which will then power the jump scare. So just like what we did with Funtime Freddy, every time the right door is closed, it will remove the repeaters that lead to the jump scare, and then add them back when the door reopens. This gives the second repeater line time to fully power, which will then reset Foxy back at stage 1. There is a small change to this compared to the first Foxy build, however, and as the fact that every time the door closes on Funtime Foxy after they leave, a small amount of power is drained when Foxy knocks on the door. So now it's going to be even more important to make sure that Foxy doesn't run to the office during the night. To make it so that Foxy doesn't move, however, we want this redstone block to stay here, which will power this redstone line, stopping all the items from going into the chests. So the way we do that is by having a set block command over at the camera system, which will set a redstone block right here to power this redstone line every time the camera is selected, and then change back to an air block every time we're not looking at that specific camera. Now before we move on to 
the next animatronic, I want to explain how the reset system will work, as once all of these hoppers have drained their items, they're not able to be used again. So we have this single hopper here with items inside of it, which will then be cloned back to the original hopper locations every time Funtime Foxy restarts their cycle. With Foxy now added, the last animatronic on the top shelf is Bonnet, who will occasionally move across the office after the camera has been put down. To stop their jump scare, all the player needs to do is press on their nose, which will scare them away until they reappear later on. Whenever we teleport back to the office and this randomizer activates Bonnet, it's going to summon in a new armor stand with equipped armor and a custom player head. This is done by having both of these repeating command blocks constantly give this named entity both the items in this chest to make it look like the actual animatronic. Now the reason why a new entity spawns every time is because the way we'll be deactivating Bonnet is by breaking the armor stand. Once the armor stand spawns in, it will be teleported up to the office and will start to move across the room. The way we do that is by giving the armor stand a teleport movement path which will move the armor stand every time there is a magenta concrete block two blocks underneath the entity. If it makes it to the left side of the office, this execute command block will detect it, which will then trigger the jump scare teleporting another bonnet armor stand in front of the player. If the armor stand is broken in time though, it obviously won't be able to reach the other side to trigger the jump scare from happening. The next animatronic is Biddy Bab, who will crawl through the center vent to reach the office. At first, a voice line will be heard to indicate that they're moving forward, but after a metallic banging sound, the vent must be closed to stop the Biddy Bab from entering. This is another simple character to set up, especially that we've already used the same system many times in the past. At the start of the night, this first redstone block gets removed, which will start this timer, powering these three command blocks, which teleport the first Biddy Bab armor stand to the first phase in the air vent. Now at the same time, the timer will reset itself by cloning this separate timer to its position, as well as removing the redstone block from the next timer, letting the movement cycle continue. This goes on until it reaches the office air vent, which will then lead into this small setup here, where there are two possible outputs. This first one is for the jump scare, and the second one is for the Biddy Bab to leave the vent and restart the cycle. Now both of these lines will be powered at the same time, however since there is a slight delay in the reset commands, the jump scare will go off first, which also removes the repeaters from the second line, stopping the reset from happening if the jump scare activates. If the vent door is closed however, the redstone dust on the jump scare line will be removed, stopping the biddy bab from being able to enter into the office. Once the door has been opened however, the redstone dust will be put back, allowing the redstone torch to activate these command blocks. Once again, this is one of the more simple designs and it's been used in almost every FNAF build so far. And speaking of designs we've already used before, the next two animatronics we'll be working on are going to use the same setup as something we've already used in this video. During the night, the power and oxygen meter will begin to drain when the electrobabs and mini arenas tamper with the generators. To stop the resources from fully depleting, we are able to use a controlled shock in the room that they're in while looking at the cameras. So to get started, we once again have two timers that will teleport the electrobab and mini arena armor stands up to the building in their set rooms. Now the electrobab has a bit more going on with them as they can either go in the left or right closets, but can't go in the closet that Funtime Freddy is already in. That's why we have these extra command blocks here to make sure that the electrobab will always go in the closet that Freddy isn't in. Also, every time the electrobab is shocked, they will always go to the opposite closet the next time that they attack, unless Funtime Freddy is already there. Once the electrobab has teleported into a closet, the redstone block on top of the hopper clock will be removed and slowly start to drain additional power. When the mini arenas attack though, they will deplete oxygen in the same way that Yendo does, just at a slower rate. And just like before with Yendo, if the oxygen meter reaches 50%, the player will be given a blindness effect. Effect. The way we can counter the attacks is by giving them a controlled shock, and we will be doing that by once again using the camera items in the inventory. So we've already gone over what happens if you were to throw the different items, but if you throw the highlighted item for the closet or building corner cameras, it will activate the controlled shock. This is done by using the same item detection commands as the cameras, it just goes into a different output. After the item is thrown, these command blocks will then power, which will first teleport the animatronic away from the camera and then stop the resource from depleting. Now since the electrobabs deplete power, however, we are unable to gain that back, unlike the oxygen meter which will start to go up again after the mini arenas have disappeared. The final feature needed is the indication to show that the animatronics are currently tampering with the generators. For this we will be using the team command, which can put the power and oxygen objectives in set teams, letting us change the color of the text. So now whenever the animatronics are active, these hopper clocks will start to change the teams of the two objectives, making it so that way the text flashes red when active. Then when it's been dealt with, the redstone block will be put back, reverting the text to normal. I'm glad that I finally started to use the scoreboard command, as it's been a big part of this build and a few systems wouldn't be possible without it. This is just the basics of the command, but I'm hoping that with experience, we'll be able to make more complex mechanics. But now moving on to the next animatronic, let's take a look at Lolbit and see how we can add them in. Instead of being a physical animatronic, Lolbit's face will appear on the office monitors, disabling the doors and cameras after all three are taken over. To 
counter this, typing LOL on the office keypad will instantly make them go away. Earlier on, I talked about how the office fan was able to animate by having two custom player heads continuously swap on top of an armor stand. For lolbit, we will be using the same commands to swap out the monitors. So while in the office, the monitor armor stands will randomly have their mob heads replaced, letting us know when lolbit is active. Slowly, all three monitors will start to be swapped until all three have been replaced, which will then trigger text to pop up on the screen, as well as playing a rapid note block alarm. Now, as this is happening, all of the doors and cameras will be disabled and unable to be used. Now, you might have noticed these buttons on the wall behind us, and these are what we will be using to counter lolbit. So by pressing all three buttons from top left to bottom right, we'll be able to turn the monitors back to normal and allow us to use the office resources again. The way we do this is by using a combination lock system, which makes sure that the buttons have been pressed in the right order to form an output. Every time a button is pressed in order, a certain block will be set in between the two repeaters, allowing this redstone block to power this line to reach the command blocks. However, if a button is pressed out of order, a different block will be set in between the repeaters, and these command blocks here will detect it and completely remove all three blocks from this line, making the player restart the combination again. When lolbit is active, this is what it's going to look like. First, all three monitors will be taken over, and then the please stand by text appears and the alarms start to go off. Our inventory has also been cleared to stop us from using any of the cameras, and the door buttons no longer close any of the doors. The only way to stop this is to turn around and press all three of these buttons in order to stop the attack. This will then give us back our resources, allowing us to defend against the other threats. The final thing needed is the system that will let us counter lolbit before the attack even begins. This is simply an add-on to the combination setup, which will cut off the repeaters for a small amount of time, stopping the next command block from being powered. The design for the activation had to be changed up a little bit for this, but it still works in the same way nonetheless. But with all this now in place, lolbit is now finished, and we can now move on to the final animatronic of the Custom Knight, who once again appears in the office. The last animatronics on the bottom shelf are once again meaningless arenas, except this time they will gradually cover the office view and block the player's sight. There is no way to prevent this from happening, and once they appear, they will stay in the same spot for the rest of the night. My idea for this involves having these smaller armor stands teleport in front of the player every time they are inside the office. This once again starts by using a randomizer that gives the next mini arena a chance to spawn in the office every time this command block detects that the player is inside. Now every time a new mini arena is added, another repeater will be set in between these command blocks, making it so that way the mini arenas teleport to the player in the same order that they do in sister location. As we continue to add another mini arena to the mix, you could see how this could be a problem during the night, especially if they block Yendo or Bonnet out of sight. No matter where we look around us, the armor stands will always be teleported in front of us. Now the mini arenas are only a problem while inside the office as they don't block the camera view, but since the player teleporting is the way that cameras work in this build, the armor stands will need to become invisible and have their armor removed every time we leave the office. So to get this to work, this row of command blocks will detect when the player is inside the office and then send an output into this block, toggling these two command blocks. Now, if the command block is not turned on, then it will turn on this redstone torch here, which will then activate this chain of command blocks, which will make the armor stand turn invisible. Then when the command block turns on again, it will unpower the redstone torch and instead activate this chain, which will then make the armor stand visible again. This works for all five of the mini arenas as they become active during the night. And with that, we now have all 10 animatronic characters added and ready to be active during the custom night. So now let's move on to the next feature and build the customization menu that will let us choose what challenge mode we want to attempt with each set character difficulty. Here is the room that we will start in before the night begins, where we can then change the customization to our liking. All 10 animatronic heads have turned on redstone lamps behind them to show who is currently selected. Now the way we can change who we want to be active is by using this console in front of us which has some labeled buttons, so that way we can change the current setup and difficulty level. Now what I want to do is make it so that way these redstone lamps behind each head only turn on when the character is selected, and to also show the difficulty level above each one. First we need the system to select the different challenge modes. So here we have 11 command strips that will set redstone blocks behind each one of these lamps that correspond to the active animatronics. This uses more scoreboard commands to work, as every time a button is pressed, it will increase the player's score by 1, powering the next command strip. This also lets us go back to the previous selection if we press the opposite button, which will remove a score instead of adding one. With this, we are now able to scroll through all 10 different challenge modes and see which animatronic will be active during the night by turning on the redstone lamp behind each one of the heads. Then, after all of the challenges have been cycled through, a command block will set our score back to zero again, which will then revert the display back to showing the first challenge. Now we need a way to activate the selected characters when the night starts. This isn't that difficult, as every animatronic can be activated by using a redstone output. Freddy, for example, will only move once this randomizer here has been powered by using a redstone block. 
So this system right here will make sure that happens once both of these redstone blocks have been removed, which will then power the set block command to activate the randomizer. Now both of these redstone blocks here will be removed at two different times. This first one when Freddy is selected in the menu, and this second one when the night starts. This is the same build for every single animatronic, and will make sure that only the selected characters will be active during the night. Next we need to add in the difficulty select to make the animatronics move faster. This is slightly more complicated, but it involves some builds that we've already used before, since every animatronic starts moving with either a timer or a randomizer. So to up the difficulty, items need to be removed from the hoppers in the timers to make the items deplete faster, and the randomizers need more trigger items that will increase the chances of animatronic spawning. Since there are five difficulty levels, we need five different activations for each character, with each trigger having a decreasing amount of items to let the character move faster. There is also an extra difficulty that I've added in which acts as a zero mode where the animatronics are not active. So by using the same selection method as the challenges, when the difficulty is increased, one of the new activators will be cloned to the spot in the character setup, changing the movement speed of the character. So now back in the customization room, we can now increase and decrease the difficulty by pressing the two buttons on the side of the desk, which now also show the difficulty level above each one of the character's heads. This is done by using named invisible armor stands that have their names changed as the difficulty changes. I've also made a small change to the sign here, so that way it says the name of the level that's currently selected, just to add a little bit more context. To it. But now with all of this now set, the customization menu is now finished, and there is only one final thing left to do to finish up with this build before we can then go ahead and try this minigame out for ourselves. And that's to add in the time system that lets us know what time it is. In the same way that Foxy works, this redstone block will be removed at the start of the night, unpowering this redstone line here, letting all of the items inside of these hoppers funnel into the chests. Now every time a hopper empties, it will then trigger these command blocks here, which are then going to activate a boss bar at the top of the screen to let us know what time it is. I did have the thought to make the time shown at the sidebar objective, however I still prefer to have the boss bar method displaying the time at the top of the screen. Then when 6am hits, all of the systems in the minigame will shut off, and then we'll be teleported out of the building and get the shift complete screen as we beat the night. So with that now added in, everything is now finished, and it's finally time for us to survive a night of sister locations custom night in Minecraft. I hope that you enjoy it, and let's see how we do. I think it would be best to attempt the 1020 Golden Freddy mode challenge for this, as it involves all the animatronics set at their max difficulty level. Now I have to be honest, this is not my first attempt at this, I've actually been at this for a few hours now, and this has definitely become the most challenging out of all the FNAF games so far. So my strategy involves waiting in the office for the first few seconds, so that way we can conserve as much power as possible, and then when the power and oxygen start to get drained, we'll go ahead and open up the cameras and deal with the Electro Babs and Mini Renas. So that should be happening, there we go, so let's go ahead and deal with them first. Go on over to the Electro Babs, and Funtime Freddy is also at the left side, so let's keep that in mind when he eventually launches an attack. So let's deal with a little bit, there we go, Funtime Freddy has also launched the attack, so let's go ahead and close that door. Ballora is also at the left, Funtime Freddy moved over to the right now. Let's go ahead and check on Foxy, Foxy's on stage 1, that's okay. Let's open up that door since we're fine for the time being, and let's just wait here for a bit longer. Oxygen's going off, so let's go ahead and deal with that, and Funtime Freddy did go over to the right side, so I think we should be okay for the time being. Let's go ahead and close that door on Ballora just in case. Foxy is just about to move, so yeah, let's go ahead and close that door, as we don't want her to escape in case we're not looking, so let's just sit here for the time being. The Biddy Babs should appear any time now. Surprise, we have both doors closed, and Ballora is definitely over at that left door now, so we'll be able to open that once we deal with all of these animatronics here. So Freddy's back at the left side, and no one's in the air vent, so we're able to open up the left door and the vent, and we should be good for the time being. Let's keep that right door closed, because Foxy is still going to be there, and let's get rid of Bonnet quickly. 2am, just under 70% power. This is probably the best I've done in quite some time actually and i think i just heard foxy banging on the door so we can go ahead and open that back up again and we should be okay never mind okay below is back on the right side but first let's go ahead and get rid of the oxygen and the, the power depleters freddy's just launched an attack okay let's go ahead and close the left door bonnet and yendo okay i just saw yendo at the corner of my eye there it's getting really difficult to see with all these mini arenas that are covering up all the view in the office uh biddy bab is at the very end of the vent there let's go ahead and open up both of these doors because i think we should be okay for the time being however i'm not too sure about the vents i'm just going to keep that closed as i don't want to miss out on a sound Q. Bonnet getting really close with Bonnet just saw them as I put the camera back up again. Oxygen and power once again is being dealt with. Freddy's over at the right, Electrobab over at the left, and once again, Ballora is back over at the right side. Go get him. Alright, let's just close both doors just so we're safe, as I don't want to end up dying to some silly mistake now. Uh, I think we will be good once we hit a sound cue. There we go. Okay, so we can open up that vent now, and Ballora has now left the right side, so we can go ahead and open that door back up. Oxygen and power being dealt with once again, so let's go ahead and deal with them. Freddy, yep, Freddy's at the left side, so let's wait for his attack. Pay close attention to that 4am. Let's get rid of Bonnet. 
all right let's just close that door just to be safe and i think we should hopefully be all right for a little bit longer so biddy babs at the very end of the vent yeah we don't need to think about them for a bit let's get rid of bonnet again all right freddy's attacking close both doors just to be safe i do hear Ballora, so let's go ahead and close both of these doors just to be safe i don't want to fail now let's go ahead and get rid of these guys front time freddy's over at the right side get rid of the electro bab and there's there's Ballora definitely at the right side now so let's keep that door closed let's keep the vent closed as well since i think the biddy bab is nearing foxy's at stage one so we're okay there let's go ahead and open that door now that Ballora has left and i don't think i heard anyone so i think we should be okay for the time being <laughs> we can finally my goodness that took so much longer than any other fnaf game has so far but there we go shift complete we finally managed to beat 1020 mode in minecraft definitely the hardest fnaf game so far however it was definitely worth the challenge so now that we've played through the original five nights of sister location and now beaten the hardest difficulty of the custom night we have now completed every night of gameplay of sister location in minecraft so now to end off this video there is only one final thing left to do and show off all the animatronic jump scares But with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is now going to wrap it up for today's video. I really do hope that you enjoyed, as it was a lot of fun putting this build together. If you're interested in future projects of mine, then be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on, so that way you know next time I upload, and you can also help the channel to continue to grow. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I will of course see you in my next video.